Greetings, Agents for Change. I am joining you from North Carolina. I'm up here for the summer. I'm somewhat off the grid, but not completely. I hope my internet connection stays good while I share my thoughts. I have received your DMs. I have received your emails. I have received your messages regarding a kingdom perspective on the times we are in, understanding what to do, and knowing the times that we are in. So I wanted to come to you as I documented my thoughts. I've spent the past 24 hours um, documenting them, <laughs> meditating, asking God some questions, and trying to get God's perspective, the big picture on what is happening. I think it's very important. Um, so please join me and uh, as I as I share some things with you. What I believe we are witnessing is the correction of history, the humanizing of humanity. Each major correction in history has occurred because of the, dehuman the de dehumanization that has occurred since the beginning of time. From Martin Luther King to Nelson Mandela, the relief of Jews in concentration camps, the release of, Israel, of the Israelites from Egypt, and of course, we all know Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi, the work that he did. So the domination or the discrimination of another group, race or gender, has been evident since the beginning of recorded history. One group has always tried to make themselves superior than others. It has spanned many cultures, nationalities, and even religion from the Egyptians to the Babylonians to the Greeks who created a false leadership philosophy that we are victims of even today. Ro from the Romans to the Turks and Armenians to the Nazis, the Rwanda genocide, even the Crusades and currently ISIS. It's the same demonic spirit that's been prevalent since the beginning of time. It's just in a different century. So let's examine some of the prejudices that we have seen that occurred during the time of Jesus. There was an instance with the Samaritan woman at the well, and she said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can you ask me for a drink? He asked for a glass of water. This is an everyday scenario that was documented for us. For the Jews do not associate with Samaritans. She prejudged Jesus. He was just a human that was asking for water. Then he told her things about herself and she ran off and announced to the village and all of her friends, friends come meet the man. She didn't say, come meet the Jew. We still witness this on a daily basis. We prejudge others because they're different, whether it's nationality, whether it's religion, whether it's race, whether it's gender, whether it's age, prejudge, prejudice. So every human is me. Every human is you. So that's why we must treat each other with respect. We all know the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have do unto them. And that's why I do my very best not to gossip about others. Gossip is demonic. Now this week, my son made a statement about his sister. We were, they were downstairs playing and I was walking through the room and he said, I hate my sister. And I kept walking and I said, so she, your sister is you. She is you, Maverick. And I kept walking and he came after me. Mom, what do you mean? And I said, well, you just said you hate your sister. So you're telling me you hate yourself and God. And he says, mom, that doesn't make any sense. And I had to explain to him that we are all one. We are in the image of God in the likeness of God. You guys know this, I know you do. 
I'm not telling you anything new. My point is we must teach our children who they are, their worth, and the worth of others, and they are each other. Maverick is his sister. At another point, we were in my car, and Maverick asked me again. And I explained to him we are a family unit, the whole entire earth. We have one creator, one Father God Almighty. And then we have small pockets of families here on the earth. He says, I understand that. And I said, well, you are your sister. It's like we need to retell the adults. That's why it's so important we teach our children the fundamental truths from the Word of God. There was one time where Jesus even dealt with prejudices amongst his very own disciples. This was in Luke 9. They completely wanted to annihilate the Samaritans because they wouldn't let them stop in their village as they were Jews traveling towards Jerusalem. And the Samaritan says, no, you can't stop in our village. And this is what the disciples said. James and John saw this. They said, Lord, will you command fire down from heaven and consume them? The Samaritans in the village, annihilate them, kill them. And what did Jesus say? He rebuked them. He says, ye know not the manner of spirit you are. He got down to the root of it. It's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit we are dealing with that has been here from the beginning of time all the way back to Cain and Abel. It comes in different forms. You have racism, ageism, gender bias, religious discrimination, prejudices. They are all iniquities. Iniquities are hidden sins in the heart. You can't see when someone's prejudiced. And at times, it's exposed outwardly. And our legislative governments cannot, I mean, our national governments cannot legis legislate love. But the kingdom of God has, for love is law. I must add, it is also a demonic spirit that attempts to dominate others. Whenever there's domination, this has been seen historically through slavery. We see it nowadays with domestic abuse, sex slavery, and child abuse. As for prejudices, at times it is systemic. It becomes built, built in. You're not born with it. But it becomes a part of your DNA for some people. And in some cases, it may be too late because their behavior has become a psychology and they are not willing to change. As for what we see in the news channels and on our news feeds and social media, do not be fooled. There are many numerous underlying agendas taking advantage of this movement for justice and humanizing humanity. From the media, to the Antifa, to the rioters, to the looters, and the political forces. Everyone struggling for power and taking advantage and maneuvering in and trying to hijack the movement. To the media, I say it is you have a responsibility to give unbiased facts and truth, not your opinions. Stop fanning the flame of their nation in Israel. He gave them law. You may know them as the 10 principles, 10 commandments. Okay, my Wi-Fi went down. I'm still here. I turned my Wi-Fi off. I think I got it. I will conclude with this. Let me know you're still there. I'm still streaming. I will conclude with this. What we are witnessing is another tipping point that is bringing correction to history, which is necessary. But as for the systemic prejudices, the problem is psychological, it's demonic, and it's generational. 
Therefore, the solution is mental transformation. And it starts with oneself, and it starts with teaching your children and those that you can influence. Use your voice, and if you have a story, share your story. There is nothing more powerful than your story. We must intentionally bring transformation by exemplifying to our children and to others love for all humanity. You can only love others to the degree you love yourself. I believe each generation is becoming less tolerant than the one it came from. There is no quick solution for those of you in the microwave generation, for it's a mentality. It's demonic, systemic, and generational. It can be changed, but it takes a transformation mind and it needs to be exemplified by love and taught to the next generation. So I've been getting emails from you, texts from you, DMs. What can I do? What should I be doing? Share your experience if you have a story. Nothing is as powerful as your story. Join a peaceful protest if you desire. Share the culture of the kingdom of God as you spread your love for others with acts of kindness, forgiveness, generosity, and or volunteering. For as we know, love never fails. It always trumps hate. Bring light into darkness. Bring knowledge where there's ignorance, which brings mental transformation. As agents of change, we can change one system at a time one industry at a time, one corporation at a time, one family at a time, which is where it starts, and one mindset at a time. Remember the foundation of a nation is the family, the family unit. So we must intentionally exemplify and teach our children that we are all made in the image and the likeness of God the Father that's equal and one human race. Here's hope to bringing true and lasting change as we correct history.